This is part two out of three, the Roly Poly Pudding by Beatrix Potter. Yes, it is infested with rats," said Tabitha tearfully. "I cut seven young ones out of one hole in the back kitchen, and we had them for dinner last Saturday. And once I saw the old father rat, an enormous old rat, cousin Ribby." I was just going to jump upon him when he showed his yellow teeth at me and whisked down the hall. The rats get upon my nerves, cousin Ribby," said Tabitha. Ribby and Tabitha searched and searched. They both heard a curious roly-poly noise under the attic floor, but there was nothing to be seen. They returned to the kitchen. Here is one of your kittens, at least," said Ribby, grabbing Moppet out of the flour barrel. They shook the flour off her and set her down on the kitchen floor. She seemed to be in a terrible fright. "Oh, mother, mother!" said Moppet. "There's been an old woman rat in the kitchen, and she's stolen some of the dough." The two cats ran to look at the dough pan. Sure enough, there were marks of little scratching fingers, and a lump of dough was gone. Which way did she go, Moppet? But Moppet had been too frightened to peep out of the barrel again. Ribby and Tabitha took her with them to keep her safely in sight while they went on their search. They went into the dairy. The first thing they found was Mittens hiding in an empty jar. They tipped up the jar and she scrambled out. "Oh, mother, mother!" said Mittens. "Oh, mother, mother! There has been an old man rat in the dairy." A dreadful, enormous, big rat, mother, and he's stolen a pat of butter and the rolling pin. Ruby and Tabitha looked at one another. A rolling pin and butter! Oh, my poor son Thomas! Exclaimed Tabitha, breaking her paws. A rolling pin? Said Ruby. Did we not hear a roly poly noise in the attic when we were looking into that chest? Ruby and Tabitha rushed upstairs again. Sure enough, the roly-poly noise was still going on quite distinctly under the attic floor. Now this is what had been happening to Tom Kitten, and it shows how very unwise it is to go up a chimney in a very old house where a person does not know his way and where there are enormous rats. Tom Kitten did not want to be shut up in a cupboard. When he saw that his mother was going to bake, he determined to hide. He looked about for a nice, convenient place, and he fixed upon the chimney. The fire had only just been lighted, and it was not hot, but there was a white, chunky smoke from the green sticks. Tom Kitten got upon the fender and looked up. It was a big, old-fashioned fireplace. The chimney itself was wide enough inside for a man to stand up and walk about. So there was plenty of room for a little tom cat. He jumped right up into the fireplace, balancing himself upon the iron bar while the kettle hangs. Tom kitten took another big jump off the bar and landed on a ledge high up inside the chimney, knocking down some soot into the fender. Tom kitten coughed and choked with the smoke. He could hear the sticks beginning to crackle and burn in the fireplace down below. He made up his mind to climb right to the top and get out on the slates and try to catch sparrows. I cannot go back. If I slipped, I might fall in the fire and singe my beautiful tail and my little blue jacket. The chimney was a very big, old-fashioned one. It was built in the days where people burnt logs of wood upon the hearth. The chimney sack stood up above the roof like a little stone tower, and the daylight shone down from the top under the slanting slates that kept out the rain. Tom Kitten was getting very frightened. He climbed up and up and up. Then he waddled sideways through inches of soot. He was like a little sweep himself. It was most confusing in the dark. One flue seemed to lead into another. There was less smoke, but Tom Kitten felt quite lost. He scrambled up and up, but before he reached the chimney top, he came to a place where somebody had loosened a stone in the wall. There were some mutton bones lying around. 
This smells funny, said Tom Kitten. Who has been gnawing bones up here in the chimney? I wish I had never come, and what a funny smell. It is something like mouse, only dreadfully strong. It makes me sneeze, said Tom Kitten. He squeezed through a hole in the wall and dragged himself along a most uncomfortably tight passage where there was scarcely any light. He groped his way for several yards. He was at the back of the stagnant bird in the attic, where there is a little mark in the picture. All at once, he fell head over heels in the dark, down a hole, and landed on a heap of very dirty rags. When Tom Kitten picked himself up and looked about him, he found himself in a place that he had never seen before, although he had lived all his life in the house. It was a very small, stuffy, fusty room, with boards and rafters and cobwebs and lath and plaster. Opposite him, as far away as he could sit, was an enormous rat. What do you mean by tumbling into my bed all covered with smuts? said the rat, chattering his teeth. Please, sir, the chimney went sweeping, said poor Tom Kitten. Anna Maria, Anna Maria, squeaked the rat. There was a pattering noise, and an old woman rat poked her head round a rafter. All in a minute, she rushed upon Tom Kitten, and before he knew what was happening, his coat was pulled off, and he was rolled up in a bundle and tied with string in very hard knots. Anna Maria did the tying. The old rat watched her and took snow. When she had finished, they both sat staring at him with their mouths open. Anna Maria, said the old man rat, whose name was Samuel Whiskers. Anna Maria, make me a kitten dumpling roly-poly pudding for my dinner. It requires dough and a pat of butter and a rolling pin, said Anna Maria, considering Tom Kitten with her head on one side. No, said Samuel Whiskers. Make it properly, Anna Maria, with breadcrumbs.